automatically, if you look in this program, this very interesting approach, we have for Alexander. Next speaker, Alexander Korchin. He's based on the to gamma physics and test of C3 and C2G series. And other speakers will be also Alexander. Thank you. 
with creation of its body. And it also seems possible that the circular vision of the heat circle will be found in lower energy processes. For example, decays of K or G bosons or the Uh, so in this, in this work, we would like to point out that uh, the study of the Higgs bottom between the photon and the Z bottom uh, can be used to study not only CP properties of the new discovered bottom, but also for testing the validity of the CPT series. So concerning the CPT series, it is one of the most different results of quantum Follows from Lorentz invariance, locality of the theory, and quantum mechanics, or uh, more precisely, unitary evolution of a system. So, one of the consequences of the CPT theory is equality of masses of particles and antiparticles. And the best experimental check is uh, for neutral counts, kilns, K0 and K0 bar, where accuracy is better than that of the non so, however, CPT uh, can reveal itself in many other ways, thus stimulating studies of where, where is extension of the standard model in which CPT violation appears due to non locality, in, for example, string theory, violation of modern symmetry in extra dimensional model, possible deviation from standard quantum mechanical evolution of states in some models of quantum resonance. So let me come a little bit to formalism which we are using. So we start with the most general effect of Lagrangian, which describes uh, uh, Higgs to gamma gamma and Higgs gamma z components. So this is quite general effect of Lagrangian, which consists of a uh, part which corresponds to a scalar Higgs and part which corresponds to pseudo scalar or CP, uh, CP even and CP all parts. The same can be written for the uh, Higgs coming to photon and Z boson. Uh, so this is not uh, arbitrary form because essentially this first part comes from the standard model. I will talk a little bit later about this. So uh, coming C gamma and C gamma theta are arbitrary couplings. Of course, in a standard model, this can be fixed precisely, but in general, uh, this is not fixed. It comes from physics beyond the standard model. Uh, so, so in this form, F is uh, just a stress tensor for the magnetic field. This is a stress tensor for the Z field. And F field is a dual, dual field tensor Uh, so this, uh, how we consider these patterns, which in principle where, as I mentioned, uh, uh, signal contains standard model value plus some, some addition from uh, new physics which uh, may come from uh, physics beyond the number. The same with the uh, constant C uh, and And other patterns uh, in a standard model are precisely zero. So we are not zero value in effect beyond the So this diagram shows uh, one uh, contribution to these decays from this uh, uh, coming to fermion groups, uh, to lepton groups and both groups. Uh, these uh, upper diagrams uh, are for two photons and the lower diagram for Z photon and photon. So I do not So now what uh, I showed you is calculation of this uh, coefficients in the standard model. So this uh, just don't pay attention to details, it's not important. So what, what is important is that it has small measure part. And the same is for decay of Higgs to Z boson in the photon, also a small, small imaginary part which comes from uh, intermediate uh, leptons and quarks. Uh, and 
this is important for, for the next uh, discussion, which I will show later. Uh, so now, what, what can we say about the uh, uh, physics uh, model B on standard model? There are plenty of models, and it's a matter of taste to, to choose uh, any of these models. So what we uh, just uh, eliminate ourselves is a uh, uh, model Let's say general approach in which the standard model is an effective law which is uh, of uh, any of uh, some fundamental or underlying unknown theory at some scale and uh, which is much larger than V, which is characteristic scale, lambda is characteristic scale of, of infinity. So it, it can be of the order of VT, for example. And another model is uh, uh, just model of the Higgs interact with fermions. Uh, uh, so it includes both scalar and pseudo-scalar parts. The sum coefficient C and P. F means uh, all fermions, leptons and poles. So this part corresponds to uh, scalar, scalar type, and this to pseudo-scalar type. And of course, in the standard model, these two terms are just first one, where interaction of Higgs with fermions is proportional to the mass of, of fermions. Now, this is a little bit of uh, formalism which uh, can be used uh, to derive a couplets of uh, new physics uh, in uh, effective quantum field zero approach. So here one can uh, use, uh, let's say, general uh, uh, <coughs> which uh, have dimension 6. So they are, they are built in uh, papers where this, uh, the whole set of these operators has been constructed. So we just use this uh, construction uh, to, uh, to obtain, uh, uh, to obtain uh, uh, effective Lagrangian, which uh, allows us to, to extract uh, couplings which, uh, uh, which are beyond the standard model uh, and uh, they describe the uh, <coughs> interaction of Higgs with uh, two photons and Higgs with photon and Z z -bone. And of course uh, we cannot uh, uh, here precisely say what, what these couplings are because they are just pure theoretical and uh, taken from general symmetry properties of gauge invariance so there are these arbitrary couplings and arbitrary energy scale at, at which scale we look uh, that uh, underlying theory is just the scale of underlying theory. So there are a few uh, free parameters we, which we have to deliver. Now, uh, so what uh, in the second model again we can do explicit calculation of group diagrams in terms of uh, arbitrary uh, couplings of Higgs, uh, pseudo-scalar and scalar and pseudo-scalar with, uh, with different uh, quarks and different leptons. And of course, here again we have real part of this couple and imaginary part. What I just would like to pay, pay attention is that the presence of imaginary part in these couplings. Uh, now, let me come directly to the process which, uh, which I am discussing. So, Higgs decay to, uh, to two photons. Uh, the amplitude using these uh, coefficients can be written, uh, for example, in this form, in terms of polarization vectors of the photon. The first photon and the second photon. Uh, we can construct uh, this again with these uh, decay rates. So, as, as long as we know these couplings, we can calculate the decay rates. Now, but this is not a, the information which we would like to have. This is the simplest, uh, just a decay rate. But also we can discuss polarization uh, properties of these two photons. And uh, the point is that uh, if we have one photon, we can always describe these polarization properties by the stocks parameters and, and photon density matrix uh, which is two by two matrix with two parameters, stock parameters. But we have two photons which come from one source, and uh, there is a famous Landorian theorem which says that uh, polarizations of this photon are correlated. Uh, so, for example, if we have a scalar Higgs with CP uh, positive plus one, then linear polarization of these photons must be 
in parallel. And for example, if we have the Kinesina scale of cubes, the two problems, then linear polarization, upper particular to each other. Uh, and uh, of course, for circular polarization is a problem. Uh, we are just opposite in, in this case because it keeps the uh, S in zero. So these uh, helicities of these two photons are, uh, are equal, of course. Uh, so we can, uh, so since the polarizations of these two photons are correlated, then uh, uh, we have to describe polarizations of these two photons by correlated density matrix of uh, two polarized photons. Uh, it also uh, has three parameters. One of them, uh, I will just have this here. So this is direct product of two matrices, one of which acts on the first photon, another one uh, as usual acts on the second photon. Uh, and we can calculate these parameters in terms of amplitudes which describes this uh, decay. And it is in the Xylon is proportional to real part of C gamma, C gamma, C gamma, C gamma. Xy2 is imaginary part, uh, C gamma, C gamma, C gamma, and C3 is uh, this combination. So parameter C2, Xy2, is the Stokes parameters which define the view of circular polarization of the photon with momentum K. And the meaning of these parameters is average photon helicity. Uh, helicity in this degree. So in case of standard model, this must be zero. Mm. Parameters xi1 and xi2 define correlation of the new polarization of the photon. And all these parameters satisfy the condition of uh, this condition. For example, if we have pure uh, standard model with scale of heaps, then this parameter is zero. And then xi1 is zero. So minus one and the linear polarization are parallel. If, if uh, instead uh, C gamma is zero and we have uh, smoother scale of heat, then psi gamma is zero, psi three plus one and we have to The question is, okay, now let me come to the second process. This is very much similar to the first one. And uh, uh, since the uh, effective Lagrange is basically the same, so we can also write this identity and the cases and define polarization parameters in terms of the same coefficients which enter the effect of one value. So what is important here is I would like to draw attention to is that uh, this parameter side which is proportional to the imaginary part of this coefficient. It's very sensitive to any physics uh, which uh, can be present. Now, the question is how to measure this polarization. So, because uh, after here, I just uh, deal with theoretical discussion. And uh, uh, technically, to measure polarization of the photon is very difficult. So, what, what can one can do is uh, uh, consider processes where uh, secondary particles decay, and uh, because they decay, they can define some decay planes, and we can study angular distribution of uh, decay particles. For example, uh, Z boson decays to a couple of fermions, and uh, now we can uh, study angular distribution, for example, uh, in the polarizer between fermion momentum in a rest frame of Z boson and direction of Z boson in the rest frame of the Higgs boson. And then uh, we derive this uh, distribution, uh, which uh, has this parameter psi two. And uh, so, if we now study, for example, so-called forward backward asymmetry, which is a ratio of uh, <coughs> number of particles going in the forward hemisphere uh, minus uh, uh, number of particles going to backward hemisphere divided by the sum of them. Uh, this is a dimensionless uh, quantity which is called forward vector asymmetry. Then this forward vector asymmetry may give us information about this polarization parameter uh, the, uh, This coefficient of proportionality 
is uh, just given in terms of the coupling of uh, uh, Z boson to pheromones, which is known in standard model. Uh, so this, for example, for muons, one point, uh, zero point for T, and for B coulombs is, is much larger. So of course it's much more profitable to have, for example, heavy coulombs, B coulombs in the end and measure jets, two jets instead of these pheromones. Uh, now, what can we measure other two parameters uh, which are uh, related to correlations of linear polarization, cell and cell free? Uh, so, in a previous case, it, it does not have this. Unfortunately, it does not have this distribution. So, we have to invent something else. And then uh, we can consider a process where we have behavior Higgs to virtual photon and Z boson virtual photon decays to lepton pair and Z boson decays to couple of fragments. And then we have, we have two uh, planes, decay planes of final particles, uh, fermion planes and lepton planes. Uh, so we can define asymptotal angle between those two planes. And then study distribution of uh, this uh, decay uh, in terms of invariant mass of uh, virtual photon decay to lepton and asymptotal angle. And then we see uh, we have uh, almost these two polarization parameters which however refer to the virtual photon, not real one. Uh, but uh, okay, these are explicit expressions for, for these uh, entities which enter the distribution. Uh,
parameters, we take uh, S as an uh, estimate, we take the values of the boundaries, coefficients, and the scale of the physics uh, is typically 4 pi D, where D is 246 GD, so this is about 3 T D. So this can be, can be scale of the physics, and then, then we have taken for CSDK. This really is a parameter polarization from the photo. And ratio of COA to standard model is about 75. So it's not too far from, from what the uh, uh, collaboration says in OS and Atlas C at the moment. And for this decay, H uh, to photo is D. Psyron is this value. Psyron is very small. Psyron is almost minus 1. And ratio of COA to standard model is 1.1. Uh, so if we just uh, change scale of the physics to 2 TV, then we have, uh, of course, other parameters. And again, we have this parameter is very small, which means circular polarization is a photon is very small. And ratio of uh, COA to standard model is almost 2. And the same for photo to symbolism. And again, uh, unfortunately, these parameters, uh, which is, let's say, most interesting parameter appears to be very small for this particular values of, of uh, the physics which we use. Uh, now, the second model, where, where I just uh, recall that this model that Higgs may couple to fermions, not like in the standard model, Scalar, but also a superscalar. So there are a mixture of scalar and superscalar. And we just choose uh, some typical values from literature which are not uh, far from this unity. So where we have some normalization, but just for estimate. And we get uh, these values of polarization parameters. Uh, and uh, this is ratio of our calculation to standard model for branching ratio of 26. And for this decay, uh, this ratio is almost 1. Uh, parameters are uh, this one. Uh, so first, of course, uh, uh, these ratios uh, for the uh, decay weights, for this decay, for this decay weights, do not contradict Atlas and CMS data. Uh, this parameter excited is of the order 10 to minus 3 or even small. Therefore, of course, forward vector symmetry is also expected to be very small. Now, so what uh, <coughs> just as discussion. So what uh, we can expect the parameter excited to uh, we will also remain small in other extension to the standard model. However, we do not claim this. It's just our assumption. So if experimental analysis of, for example, this distribution, always an angle uh, of the final uh, fermions coming from the KLC will give considerable value of excitement. What would that mean? So this means additional sources of violation of chemicity of effective reduction, for example, at very small distances in underlying theory. So since unitarity or chemicity is one of the conditions in the proof of CPT theory, in fact, in the theory, this measurement in this decay from the forward vector facility can be useful for testing CPT theory. As for parameter xi1 and xi3, we get information about CD properties of the Higgs model. In particular, Psi1 is very, very important. So these parameters can be measured in the Higgs decay uh, for uh, Higgs decay to four photon and Z and to uh, photon decay to two electrons and Z decay to uh, two fermions. So by distribution over azimuthal angle between two planes, we can just getting extract information about SCP properties. So this, uh, okay, so this is not very really essential. So I am slowly coming to, to conclusion. So uh, just uh, we studied the polarization properties of two photons and photon and z boson states in the case of one decrease. Parametric site in which determines Circular polarization of the photon can be measured in the decay of H to uh, photon and Z and 
then no variation from the standard model uh, is zero. If psi 2 is not zero, and we have any non-zero value, then this would mean signature of the physics below the standard model, and the evaluation energy is zero. If psi, psi 2 is not zero, and it is large, or just considerably larger than that of the system, this may indicate the evaluation of the signals. And non zero value of the cyclone will indicate the evaluation of the CPC of presence of effects of the physics. So just a few words. Uh, as for experimental situation about this decays, I think uh, uh, good results may come uh, at ATV LHC, this next one, and the big uh, integrated luminosity of about uh, 100 inverse pentagons. So the, at least uh, they are planning to measure uh, the, uh, wanted to measure this decay with this uh, uh, and maybe a lot of distribution, but this is not the idea. Thank you very much for your attention. Questions, please. Good question. Photons, we have uh, uh, 
uh, if I'm not if I'm, I'm not mistaken about 30 events for two forms, CMS and about maybe the same number for Atlas collaboration. So it's only about 30 events which give us an indication of the Higgs boson. So uh, it's very difficult to see that. Uh, uh, and uh, moreover, we are discussing angular distributions. So angular distributions uh, certainly will be much more, more events. But uh, I would say about 100, 100 or 200 events will allow to extract the parameters XI2, uh, maybe XI1, XI2. There is one for the book for the Thank you. 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 Thank you.